According to Reuters, Ukraine President Volodymyr Zelensky honored his people's resilience in times of bloodshed in a long and lyrical New Year speech, while Russian leader Vladimir Putin stressed his country's unity in a short and stern message that made only passing reference to the war. The speeches, traditional December 31st messages in both Russia and Ukraine, came as both countries marked the end of the year with increased air attacks on each other's territories. But neither side can point to any major frontline achievements in 2023. According to Reuters, Ukraine's shelling of the city of Donetsk in early New Year's Day hours killed four people, a Russian-installed official in the eastern region of Ukraine said, while Ukrainian officials said at least one person was killed in Russia's air attack on Odessa. Fourteen people were also injured in heavy shelling by Ukrainian forces on the center of Donetsk, Denis Pushilin, the Russian-appointed head of the broader Donetsk region of which the Donetsk city is the administrative center, wrote on the Telegram messaging app. According to Reuters, artificial intelligence represents a mixed blessing for the legal field, U.S. Supreme Court Chief Justice John Roberts said in a year-end report published on Sunday, urging, caution and humility, as the evolving technology transforms how judges and lawyers go about their work. Roberts struck an ambivalent tone in his 13-page report. He said AI had potential to increase access to justice for indigent litigants, revolutionize legal research and assist courts in resolving cases more quickly and cheaply while also pointing to privacy concerns and the current technology's inability to replicate human discretion. According to Reuters, the Indian rupee will open little changed on Monday, with the US Federal Reserve interest rate outlook and the Reserve Bank of India's forex strategy expected to be the key to begin the new year. Non-deliverable forwards indicate the rupee will open nearly unchanged from 83.2075 on Friday. Other Asian markets were off. According to Bloomberg, South Korean exports to the US exceeded shipments to China for the first time in two decades last month, in a sign of shifting ties amid global tensions over economic security and tech supply chains. South Korea sold $11.3 billion in goods to the U.S. in December compared with $10.9 billion to China, the trade ministry said Monday. The switch in positions came as South Korea's overall exports rose 5.1 percent from a year earlier, a third monthly increase after a year-long slump. According to Reuters, China's President Xi Jinping exchanged congratulations with U.S. President Joe Biden on the 45th anniversary of diplomatic ties between the two countries, the official Xinhua news agency said on Monday. Xi also exchanged New Year's messages with North Korea leader Kim Jong-un, and both announced 2024 to be a friendship year for both countries, launching a series of activities for that, Xinhua said separately. According to Reuters, the bull run in Indian financial markets is likely to continue in 2024 as foreign interest remains robust, with heavy buying expected in both equity and debt markets, several analysts and industry watchers said. India's inclusion in the JP Morgan Emerging Market Debt Index will boost investments in government debt, while attractive valuations will keep funds flowing into the share market. According to Reuters, Bank of Korea Governor Ri Chong Yong said on Monday recent market concerns over a financially troubled builder are a warning sign over the financial risks of prolonged monetary tightening. While managing inflation remains the top priority, it is important to find the right policy mix as South Korea approaches the end of its long fight to bring consumer prices under control, Ri said in a New Year message. According to Reuters, a massive earthquake with a preliminary magnitude of 7.6 hit central Japan on Monday, triggering a tsunami warning and advisories for residents to evacuate. A tsunami around one meter high struck parts of the coast along the Sea of Japan with a larger wave expected, public broadcaster NHK reported. According to Reuters, parts of Sakhalin Island's western coast and the mainland cities of Vladivostok and Nakhodka, which are situated close to Japan on Russia's Pacific seaboard, are under threat of tsunami, state news agency TASS reported on Monday, citing officials. A massive earthquake with a preliminary magnitude of 7.6 struck central Japan on Monday, triggering a tsunami warning and advisories for residents to evacuate. According to Reuters, Israel is withdrawing some forces from Gaza to shift to more targeted operations against Hamas, and is partially returning reservists to civilian life to help the economy as the country enters the new year set for a prolonged war, an Israeli official said. 
The official said the war will continue in the Palestinian enclave until the Islamist faction is toppled, adding that some of the troops withdrawn will prepare for a possible second front in Lebanon. According to Reuters, sales of sports utility vehicles rose in December, while small car sales fell despite high discounts, data from Indian automakers showed on Monday. While entry-level vehicles remain a millstone around automobile makers' necks, they have benefited from the sales of premium vehicles, catering to a more well-off demographic largely unaffected by inflation. According to Reuters, Taiwanese chipmaker TSMC was dragged into the election campaigning fray on Monday as vice presidential candidates argued over the company's overseas investments and whether tensions with China made Taiwan too dangerous a place to invest. The January 13 presidential and parliamentary election is happening as China, which claims Taiwan is its own territory has stepped up military pressure to assert those claims, including staging war games near the island. According to Reuters, Israeli tanks pulled out of some Gaza city districts on Monday while remaining in others, residents said, ahead of a planned troop reduction in the war, but fighting raged elsewhere in the Palestinian enclave along with intense bombardment. Israel says the war in Gaza, which has reduced much of the territory to rubble, killing thousands and plunging its 2.3 million people into a humanitarian disaster, has many months to go. According to Yahoo Finance, early in 2023, Donald Trump clearly thought he had a winning issue with stocks. A regular part of his message was to claim President Biden was market poison, with the former president vigorously comparing the down year of 2022 to the Great Depression of 1929. According to Reuters, Manchester United midfielder Donny van de Beek has joined Eintracht Frankfurt on loan for the rest of the 2023-24 season, United said on Monday. The 26-year-old Dutch international joined United in 2020 from Ajax Amsterdam but has not featured regularly for the club. He has made only two Premier League starts for United since returning from a loan spell at Everton in 2022. According to Reuters, Chinese carmaker Geely Automobile Holdings Limited set its sales volume target at 1.9 million units for 2024, up 13% from its total sales last year, according to a Hong Kong stock exchange filing on Monday. The company also said it increased its sales volume target for new energy vehicles by more than 66% compared with the total sales volume achieved in 2023, without giving a figure. According to Reuters, Baidu has terminated its planned $3.6 billion acquisition of Nasdaq-listed JOYY Inc.'s China live streaming business, the company said on Monday in a filing with the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. The failure of the deal casts a shadow on search engine giant Baidu's ambition to diversify its revenue. The company proposed to acquire JOYY's video-based entertainment live streaming business in China, known as YY Live, in 2020. According to Reuters, Russian President Vladimir Putin said on Monday that a series of Ukrainian missile strikes on the Russian border city of Belgorod that killed 20 people and wounded 111 was a terrorist act that would not go unpunished and promised more strikes on Ukrainian targets. Speaking at a meeting with servicemen at a military hospital in Moscow, Putin said that the strikes, which came amid intensified Russian air assaults against Ukrainian cities Kyiv and Kharkiv, will not go unpunished. According to Reuters, Iran's Albers warship has entered the Red Sea, the semi-official Tasnim news agency reported on Monday, at a time of soaring tensions on the key shipping route amid the Israel-Hamas war and attacks on vessels by forces allied to Tehran. Tasnim did not give details of the Albers' mission but said Iranian warships had been operating in open waters to secure shipping routes, combat piracy and carry out other tasks since 2009. According to Reuters, Australian home prices rose last year, a significant turnaround from the 5% dip seen in 2022, but interest rate hikes and persistent cost of living pressures have somewhat slowed the pace of growth through the final months of the year. Figures from property consultant CoreLogic out on Tuesday showed prices nationally jumped 8.1% in 2023, but well below the 24.5% surge recorded in 2021. Prices in December nudged higher by 0.4%, the smallest monthly gain since February. According to Bloomberg, Israel's central bank cut interest rates for the first time since the height of the global pandemic in 2020, 
in a sign it's confident that markets have stabilized almost three months into the war against Hamas. The Monetary Committee on Monday lowered its key rate to 4.5% from 4.75%, ending a pause in place since July. A narrow majority of economists polled by Bloomberg predicted the move, and markets or betting rates will fall below 3.4% by the end of 2024. According to Reuters, the Bank of Israel lowered short-term borrowing rates for the first time in nearly four years on Monday following data showing a weakening economy and easing inflation as a result of Israel's war against Palestinian militant group Hamas. Ahead of the decision, analysts were split, with seven expecting no move and seven projecting a 25 basis point reduction, the first reduction since April 2020. According to Reuters, a slim majority of the members of Germany's Free Democrats have voted in a non-binding membership poll to stay in Chancellor Olaf Scholz's fractious three-way governing coalition, party sources said on Monday. The low-tax pro-business party's membership has increasingly chafed at governing with Scholz's socially-minded Social Democrats and the Greens, leading to speculation that the coalition might not last the just under two years that remain of its term. According to Yahoo Finance, Stocks finished 2023 on a historic winning streak. The SP500 enters the new year having risen for nine straight weeks, the longest consecutive run of weekly gains since 2004. According to Bloomberg, Hungary's government said it will overshoot the budget deficit estimate for 2023 by more than half a percentage point of economic output, raising fresh doubts about the credibility of its fiscal targets. In a last-minute announcement, the finance ministry said the projected shortfall for the year ended December 31 will hit 5.9% of GDP. That is 0.7 percentage point higher than the government's revised deficit target for the year, and compares to the 3.9% estimated initially. According to Reuters, Peru's inflation through 2023 closed at 3.24%, the lowest annual rate in three years. Official data showed on Monday after consumer prices rose marginally in December, a small boost for the country in the throes of an economic recession. The central bank had initially projected inflation in 2023 would end at 3.8 percent, before adjusting its forecast to 3.1 percent last month following a string of promising inflationary indicators that saw a quicker than expected recovery. According to Reuters, the Bank of Israel lowered short-term borrowing rates for the first time in nearly four years on Monday, the first developed country to ease policy, following data showing a weakening economy and easing inflation as a result of Israel's war against Palestinian militant group Hamas. Ahead of the decision, analysts were split, with seven expecting no move and seven projecting a 25 basis point reduction, the first reduction since April 2020. According to Reuters, Many electric vehicles lost eligibility for tax credits of up to $7,500 after new battery sourcing rules took effect on Monday, including the Nissan Leaf, Tesla Cybertruck all-wheel drive and Chevrolet Blazer EV, the U.S. Treasury said. The Treasury issued guidelines in December detailing new battery sourcing requirements aimed at weaning the U.S. electric vehicle supply chain away from China. They took effect on Monday. According to Bloomberg, the Philippine Stock Exchange expects the number of initial public offerings to double in 2024, after a sluggish year that saw more delistings than debuts. The bourse sees six companies going public this year starting with Citicor Renewable Energy Corp., President Ramon Monzon said in a statement. The exchange recorded three IPOs last year, far below its target of 14, while four companies voluntarily delisted. According to Reuters, Nicaragua and China on Monday formally started trading under a new free trade agreement, allowing the Central American country to export some 71% of its products into the largest Asian market and free of tariffs. The exports will include meat and seafood, such as fish, shrimp, lobsters and sea cucumber, as well as sugar, peanuts and rum, state media reported. Among non-food items included in the agreement are leather, charcoal and wood, and automobile parts. According to Yahoo Finance, Wall Street economists and market strategists entered 2023 expecting a recession and predicting unusually weak returns for stocks. What we got was resilient economic growth and a 24% surge in the SP500. According to Bloomberg, a powerful earthquake hit off the Noto Peninsula on Japan's northwest coast, 
followed by more than 50 aftershocks, killing at least four people and triggering a widespread tsunami warning. A major fire broke out in the city of Wajima and appeared to spread across several buildings, video on broadcaster NTV showed after the magnitude 7.6 Tembler. The city was hit by a tsunami of at least 1.2 meters, the largest reported by NHK. Six cases of buildings collapsing with people trapped inside have been reported following Monday's tremors, Japan's chief cabinet secretary Yoshimasa Hayashi told a press conference. According to Reuters, the powerful earthquake that hit central Japan on New Year's Day killed at least six people, as police and local authorities early on Tuesday reported cases of bodies being pulled from the rubble of collapsed buildings. The quake with a preliminary magnitude of 7.6 struck in the middle of the afternoon on Monday, destroying buildings, knocking out power to tens of thousands of homes and prompting residents in some coastal areas to flee to higher ground. According to Reuters, President Volodymyr Zelensky said in an interview published by The Economist on Monday that the notion that Russia was winning the nearly two-year-old war was only a feeling, and that Moscow was still suffering heavy battlefield losses. Zelensky also said there were no real signs that Russia was interested in peace and that any indication that Russia wanted talks signified that Russia was running out of weapons and soldiers. According to Bloomberg, Iran dispatched a warship to the Red Sea after the U.S. Navy destroyed three Houthi boats, a move that risks ratcheting up tensions and complicates Washington's goal of securing a waterway that's vital to global trade. The Albers destroyer traversed the Bab el-Mandeb Strait, a narrow choke point between the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden, on Monday, Iranian state media said without providing further information on the vessel's mission. According to Reuters, Australia's Eagers Automotive on Tuesday said an investigation found that a cyber incident last week that resulted in an outage involved unauthorized access to parts of the company's information technology systems by a third party that accessed data from its servers. Based on investigations to date, the company is in the process of notifying a small number of individuals identified who may face serious risk of data misuse, the automotive retailer said in a statement. According to Bloomberg, Asian equities are poised to start 2024's first trading day trending down after U.S. stocks last week retreated from near all-time highs in a blip for a market notching its longest weekly advance since 2004. Contracts for Australian benchmarks fell, while Japan, hit by a powerful earthquake on New Year's Day that killed at least four people and triggered a widespread tsunami warning, as closed for a national holiday. According to Bloomberg, most large South Korean banks plan to set up night shifts when one trading hours are extended this year, bringing back a relic from the 1990s that had disappeared due to changes in working conditions. Shinhan Bank started rostering traders to work nights in September, while Korea Development Bank, Worry Bank, Industrial Bank of Korea and Nong Hee Up Bank have all taken steps toward doing the same. Sui Up Bank is planning to add more staff without specifying whether or not they will work at night. According to Reuters, Russia's police have detained thousands of migrants across the country in New Year's Eve raids with scores of them facing deportation, Russian media reported on Monday. About 3,000 migrants were detained in Russia's second-largest city of St. Petersburg during checks to prevent crime, Russia's RIA state news agency reported. According to Bloomberg, ASML holding NV cancelled shipments of some of its machines to China at the request of U.S. President Joe Biden's administration, weeks before export bans on the high-end chipmaking equipment came into effect, people familiar with the matter said. The Dutch manufacturer had licenses to ship three top-of-the-line deep ultraviolet lithography machines to Chinese firms until January when new Dutch restrictions take full effect. However, U.S. officials reached out to ASML to ask them to immediately halt pre-scheduled shipments of some of the machines to Chinese customers, according to people familiar with the matter, who asked not to be identified because the discussions were confidential. According to Bloomberg, Singapore's economy grew faster than expected in 2023, as year-end gains in manufacturing and construction coupled with relative strength in the services sector helped add momentum to activity. Gross domestic product grew 1.2% during the year, according to advance estimates Tuesday from the Ministry of Trade and Industry. That's better than the government's projection for an annual expansion of around 1%. According to Bloomberg, for some, a slump of almost 60% is a signal to buy Chinese stocks.
Almost a third of 417 respondents to Bloomberg's latest markets live pulse survey say they will increase their China investments over the next 12 months. That compares with just 19% in a similar August survey and is higher than the 25% who plan to boost exposure in March. Only a fifth now anticipates cutting their China holdings. According to Bloomberg, oil advanced after Iran sent a warship to the Red Sea in response to the destruction of three Houthi boats by the U.S. Navy over the weekend. West Texas Intermediate traded near $72 a barrel after declining by 5.2% over the prior three sessions, while Brent closed around $77 on Friday. The U.S. Navy said it was fired upon when responding to a distress call from a vessel in the Red Sea, resulting in the sinking of the three boats. Iran's Albers destroyer entered the vital waterway on Monday, state media said, without providing further information on the ship's mission. According to Bloomberg, Baidu Inc.'s bid to acquire Joy Inc.'s live streaming business for China has lapsed, dealing a blow to the search engine giant's advances into the digital video arena. The Beijing-based company said its $3.6 billion deal for Joy's YY Live has expired three years after it was unveiled because regulators did not approve the transaction by December 31, according to a Monday filing to the exchange. The deal was previously slated to close in the first half of 2021. According to Reuters, Sidney Wolf, a doctor who for decades campaigned for reform across the U.S. health system, including for more affordable care and stricter oversight of drug safety and medical devices, died Monday in Washington. The cause was brain cancer, his wife, Suzanne Goldberg, told Reuters. He was 86. According to Reuters, chip machine manufacturer ASML on Monday said the Dutch government had partially revoked an export license for the shipment of some chip-making equipment to China, following U.S. export restrictions. According to Reuters, as general elections approach this week in Bangladesh, opposition leader Abdul Moyen Khan says he had to hide out in the homes of a string of acquaintances until nominations closed, trying to escape a government crackdown. The former minister and his Bangladesh Nationalist Party are not running in the January 7 vote, in which Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina is chasing a fourth straight term, despite a bleak economy that needed an IMF bailout last year. According to Reuters, Singapore's economy grew 2.8% in the fourth quarter year-on-year, -year, preliminary government data showed on Tuesday, faster than some economists expected and helped by improvements in construction and manufacturing. The fourth quarter growth in gross domestic product was faster than the 1% expansion in the third quarter of 2023. According to Reuters, Hackers accessed the court recordings database in Australia's Victoria State and disrupted the audiovisual in court technology network, impacting recordings and transcription services, an official said on Tuesday. Recordings of some court hearings between November 1 and December 21, 2023 may have been stolen, Court Services Victoria CEO Louise Anderson said in a statement. Some hearings before November 1 of May also have been affected, she said. According to Bloomberg, at least six people were killed and others injured in a powerful earthquake that hit off the Noto Peninsula on Japan's northwest coast, wrecking buildings, buckling roads and triggering fires. Firefighters were battling a blaze that broke out into the city of Wajima and spread to more than 50 houses and buildings after Monday's magnitude 7.6 tremor, public broadcaster NHK said. Residents were warned to remain alert to the possibility of a tsunami across almost the entire length of the Sea of Japan coast, the warnings of a major tsunami were lifted. According to Reuters, Asian shares started the first trading day of the new year on a steady footing on Tuesday, as investors returning after a holiday lull looked ahead to fresh trading catalysts from key economic releases later in the week. Risk appetite was strong after global shares ended 2023 with their biggest annual rise in four years, driven by the prospect that major central banks globally could begin easing rates this year in a major boost for consumers and businesses shackled by high borrowing costs. According to Bloomberg, Chinese President Xi Jinping pledged to strengthen economic momentum and job creation, acknowledging some companies and citizens had endured a difficult 2023 in a rare admission of domestic headwinds facing the country. While China's most powerful leader since Mao Zedong used his annual New Year address to trumpet his nation's achievements, he also conceded some enterprises had a tough time, and people had difficulty finding jobs and meeting basic needs.
According to Bloomberg, China has restored import levies on coal from the beginning of the year, a move that could threaten Russian exporters dependent on the world's largest market for the fuel. The tariffs were removed in May 2022 to guard against supply risks after Moscow's invasion of Ukraine roiled global energy markets. That helped pave the way for record imports last year, which included an increased portion of Russian coal shunned by other buyers. Now, policy has shifted to protecting China's mining companies from the consequences of a glut after domestic output also rose to an all-time high. According to Bloomberg, Vedanta Resources Limited faces a moment of reckoning this week as Indian billionaire Anil Agarwal's miner seeks approval for a proposal that could help it buy more time to honor its debt liabilities. Bondholders have until January 2 to give an early consent on a plan to push out due dates on $3.2 billion in bond repayments, a move that prompted SP Global Ratings in December to cut the company's rating deeper into junk. According to Reuters, Russia launched a drone attack on Kyiv in the early hours of Monday, Ukrainian officials said, with downed drone debris sparking a fire at a residential building in one of the capital's districts. Kyiv Mayor Vitaly Klitschko said on the Telegram messaging app that the loud explosions heard in the city were the work of air defense systems engaged in repelling the attack. According to Bloomberg, Bitcoin surpassed $45,000 for the first time in nearly two years as anticipation of an approval of an exchange-traded fund investing directly in the biggest token intensified. The cryptocurrency jumped as much as 4% to its highest level since April 6, 2022 and traded at $44,844 as of 9.45 a.m. Singapore time. Other tokens also advanced with Ether, the second biggest, rising as much as 2.6%. According to Reuters, oil prices jumped 1% on Tuesday, starting the new year higher as a Red Sea naval clash focused attention on potential Middle East supply disruptions and expectations of Chinese economic stimulus boosted the demand outlook in the world's top crude importer. Brent crude rose $1.03, or 1.3%, to $78.07 a barrel by 0225 GMT, while U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude was at $72.53 a barrel, up 88 cents, or 1.2%. According to Bloomberg, Elon Musk's X is now worth less than a third of the price the billionaire paid for the former Twitter Inc., according to Axios citing disclosures by Fidelity, which helped him complete the $44 billion purchase. Fidelity cut by a further 11% the value of its holding in X as of the end of November, the report said, citing the latest portfolio update for its blue-chip growth fund. It extended a series of markdowns as the mutual fund firm gauged the value of the closely held ad-funded company that struggled to attract advertisers back in 2023. According to Bloomberg, a private gauge of China's factory activity gained momentum in December, contrasting with official data that suggested the outlook for the nation's manufacturers remains fragile. The Kaixin Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index rose to 50.8 last month from 50.7 in November the strongest reading since August and above the estimate in a Bloomberg survey of economists. A reading above 50 indicates expansion and anything below that points to contraction. According to Reuters, Asia's factory activity weakened in December, portending a shaky start for the region's manufacturing powerhouses in 2024 as China's patchy economic recovery impeded a broader revival in demand. A range of purchasing managers' indexes published by SP Global on Tuesday showed factory activity continuing to decline in most Asian economies at the end of last year and confidence broadly sagging. According to Reuters, Bitcoin rose above $45,000 on Tuesday for the first time since April 2022 as the world's biggest and best-known cryptocurrency started 2024 with a bang buoyed by optimism around possible approval of exchange-traded spot Bitcoin funds. Bitcoin touched a 21-month peak of $45,488, having gained 154% last year in the strongest performance since 2020. It was last up 2.6% at $45,344 but remains far off the record high of $69,000 it touched in November 2021. According to Reuters, State Street Bank Trust Company of Hong Kong made the first dollar one trade after South Korean authorities opened up the interbank market to foreign financial institutions under a pilot program from Tuesday, sources familiar with the deal said. The trade was conducted with Hana Bank, 
according to the sources who declined to be identified as they are not authorized to speak to media. According to Reuters, Israeli aircraft and tanks stepped up strikes in southern Gaza overnight, residents said, after it announced plans to pull back some troops, a move the U.S. said signaled a gradual shift to lower-intensity operations in the north of the enclave.